Hey, what's going on guys? Today we got a special new update that added a brand new Ultra class. The class in question being called Vanguard. Now I would have made this video a lot sooner, but I was pretty busy helping patch some bugs with the class. But in any case, the way you find the area with the trainer and sword is in a pillar by opening a hidden door near the Ultra Sigil trainer. Now the way you find and obtain this class is by first creating a super greatsword account and then getting it orderly until it can meditate. If you speak to the trainer before getting meditate, he will tell you that the way you use your sword is incorrect. But despite his dialogue, before you get meditate, you do not need sword or great sword XP. After you achieve this, he will send you on a quest in Deep Sunken to retrieve a crystal near Soul Snap Trainer and make your way back to Tundra 5 to talk to him. Once you show him the crystal, he will give you the task of going to three locations. One on the DSH mat atop of Mount Gilu, one on the top of Burial Grounds Tower, and one on top of Necro Church in the middle of the abyss. Do note that you must reach all these spots and use the crystal near them in under 15 minutes and back to the trainer or else all the energy will leak out and you'll have to try again. Of course at long last, when you meet these requirements, he will finally teach you the Ultra class. That's pretty much it for the attainment, so now we're moving on to... Now the class starting off seems pretty interesting. After buying all your skills, your M2 stays the same, but your M1s will be changed into 3 normal slashes rather than a punch knee overhead. That aside, there's nothing too special since the m don't do any crazy damage at all. As you can see, this is what the damage normally looks like in a private server, so you can imagine it doing a little more than it looks because of the K health bow. Not to mention, the Metal Scrum also has slash resistance. But moving forward, for our first skill, we got Puncture, which lunges towards your opponent, impaling and tossing them away through Ragdoll. Despite its long windup and mediocre range, it actually breaks through physical and mana shield. After that, we got the move Blade Crash, which throws your sword up, and then you jump and slam down on the ground. This move can be cancelled either by aiming too far or just by not clicking anywhere after you go up. The move also breaks mana shield however it doesn't break physical block. Now that we're past those two moves you might have noticed that there's a strange new bar above your health bar called Aether. Aether, Aether, whatever. What this bar does when it's filled by at least 20% is allow you to use a zero ignition. This mode allows you to ignite and enhance all your moves and basic attacks with the zero flames. First looking back in the puncture it turns into a longer range punch that deals heavy damage whether or not someone is physically blocking or mana shielding. Basically meaning if you can't maintain social distancing with a Zerg Puncture, you're going to lose at least 30% of your health. The same unblockable trait applies to a Zerg Blade Crash, except not only do you eat some crazy ass damage, but you also get burn scars which makes them take even more damage afterwards. Also if you're wondering if you can at least block not to get any heat scars, no. No you cannot. For the Azir M2, I turned it into a long wind-up teleport, which is also unblockable by the way. In my opinion, this could have been its own move by itself, but it's still pretty cool. So yeah, in a nutshell, this class is like Abyss Walker's more flashy and popular older brother with the ability to annihilate vampires and F holders with these. Oh, and I forgot to mention you also heal if you land your attacks with Azir Flame on. So yeah, this class is crazy and so am I. In any case, that's all I got for the showcase, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.